this is just a quick follow up on the uh, Rockland 5100 teardown video. So, as you can see, I've torn out the old AZ fan, which is uh, a bit of an oddball here in Europe since uh, it is a Pabst brand, which is a German manufacturer, but it's a 120 volt model rated at 18 watts. So, this thing's been running at 50 hertz, which has been well, it's specified for it, but yeah, it's probably not really its uh, best uh, efficiency point. And uh, I've replaced that with uh, a firmly controlled uh, old IBM server fan. Uh, it's a super red brand ball bearing, despite its very Chinese sounding name. These seem to be of excellent quality. I've used quite a few of them over time. And uh, I've just hooked that uh, up to straight over the big 10 phase microfarad capacitors uh, which are providing the unregulated input to the 5 volt uh, rails. So the voltage across these caps is about 8.5 volts and the fan runs just fine off of that. And in addition to the uh, uh, change of a fan, I've added this uh, plastic shroud. Since this fan doesn't run, uh, even at maximum setting, doesn't move as much air as this one, although the uh, amount of air moved per watt is immensely larger. This thing is just silly inefficient. I uh, cannot even begin to describe it. I actually first installed one of these uh, knee deck Beta SL fans, uh, which uh, uh, is specified for what's that, uh, 150 milliamps, and uh, this thing running at 8.5 volts uh, moved uh, about as much air as this one, so really, really not the best fan in the world, that thing. But uh, this thing is moving even less air, and it should perform quite well. I did a test without this shred and the hotter of the regulators got up to about 50 degrees, which is about the same as it did before. And we've also got quite a bit less uh, heat generated since we've removed uh, about 10 watts or even more. I think it's about 12 to 13, it might even be 14 watts of power being dissipated being drawn out of this uh, transformer so this thing is uh, probably running relatively close to its limit already so th it seems to run quite a bit cooler but I'm going to do some more thermal monitoring on this thing just about to turn it on and keep some ice on it alright now I've got the unit reassembled and I hope you all remember the horror of a noise it was making before so Let's see what it sounds now. That's a bit of a difference, isn't it? And we'll drop the power dissipation from about 60 watts to 46, 47 of our bait. And the fan is moving some air. If I really wanted to hack it, I would just cut out this aluminium here, but I don't think I can be bothered. It doesn't really need that much cooling. And really the biggest issue was that uh, this fan just has so bad bearings that uh, it sounded uh, made a lot of noise and very little work. I actually think this unit might have been used uh, agriculturally uh, at some stage because uh, if I take a really deep sniff at this fan it kind of has a faint smell of cow dung to it. So it might have been used uh, as uh, perhaps uh, some kind of VFD driver or something. Which kind of makes sense since we have some more wear on these low frequency knobs than we do on the high frequency ones. So, uh, I suppose no one will ever find out. At least it should run a reasonably cool now. The hottest heating got up to just about 50 degrees after about an hour's worth of runtime before, so we'll see if we can best that in the long term. And I'm starting to get quite confident in this. The unit has been running for about two hours now, and uh, I added a little heater on the air inlet. Just uh, a clothing iron and uh, a heat sink underneath, so it's getting a bit warm. 
and I'm craving the temperature right between right between the case and the heat sink there so we're measuring the air temperature roughly and then I'm also measuring the air outlet temperature right there neither of the sensors are touching anything they're just sitting in free air and uh, we're getting maximum heat temperature of about 52 degrees the unit is putting out its maximum frequency and power for 2 megahertz at some voltage getting into the scope there and we're getting a temperature rise of 33, 34 about 4 degrees, 4 or 5 degrees or so across the entire deal and the fan has revved up quite a bit from its uh, resting state while the unit is cold and uh, I tried running it up to 60 degrees it didn't break or anything but just stopping the fan so I'm quite confident in this the risk of uh, inlet temperatures ever getting up to 33 degrees around where I use this thing is very unlikely the air temperature in the shop is usually below 20 degrees so I think that's quite a successful modification and certainly a bliss on the ears it's damn well dead quiet and the curious thing I noticed about this unit is uh, if you set it to uh, 2 megahertz uh, which uh, uh, it's a bit cryptic it means you have a 1 megahertz setting here and all these knobs actually go up to 10 but it's not labeled so we're at uh, 2 mega uh, 1 megahertz and uh, 10,000 kilohertz so that's 2 megahertz there but if you actually set it to an out of range setting it will absolutely glitch out on you I haven't been able to capture uh, what's actually causing that distortion but it seems to be just kind of I don't know, doing all kinds of weird stuff I wish I had a more sophisticated scope and I might actually be able to do some kind of glitch trigger on that but yeah that's really weird I'm not certain if that's a hardware issue or if it's supposed to be that way because the manual basically just says that behaviours if set to over 2 megahertz are kind of unknown and shouldn't be accounted for so the solution is obviously to just not set it to more than 2 megahertz because it works perfectly as long as that's not the case but hmm. Weird issues with old gear. Anyway, I mostly just wanted to share the thermals. That's a bit of a big thing. Cheerio!